scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are many of you, you need to stop what you're doing now. Stop that business, stop that contract, whatever. Just stop and seek counsel. Because your continuing it is about to reschedule another season of pain. Listen to me. Time does not turn ignorance to knowledge. Time does not turn pain to joy. You must bridge time with wisdom. Are we together? Seek counsel. I thought I had God. But the five areas I thought I had God, none of them has produced the result that I want. I think I need to go back and find out. I may be missing something about hearing God. I thought God said I should start ministry, but I started and it looks like it's not God. Let me go back again. Three days before Koinonia would start in Abuja here, I was still on a retreat, re-verifying again. God, please, is it you? Look beyond my humanity and let me hear from you again. If it is not you, I will cancel it. Let's finish up. So number four, counsel from spiritual authorities. Number five, the fifth platform that is available to access the leadings of God is the prophetic ministry this will be my last for tonight and i want you to please pay attention the prophetic ministry both the office of the prophetic and then revelatory gifts the prophetic ministry is a very unique ministry given by god to the body of christ because when you look beyond the imperfections and the imbalances around the prophetic the prophetic is a mysteriously powerful tool that can bring rest and direction, comfort to a man within a moment. Age-long confusion and captivity can come to end in a moment if and when the prophetic is, ad is, ad is administered within its jurisdiction of relevance. An example of the power of the prophetic reflecting the leadings of God first samuel chapter 10 beginning from verse 1 to 7 please first samuel 10 1 to 7 this was the encounter between saul and prophet samuel the bible says then samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head the he being saul and kissed him and said is it not because the lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance verse 2 when thou art departed from me today, you shall find two men by Rachel's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zelda, and they will say unto thee, The asses which thou wentest to seek have been found. And lo, thy father had left the care of the asses and sorrowed for you, saying, What shall I do? Thinking his son had been devoured maybe by a beast or so. Verse 3. Then thou shalt go forward. That's the assignment of the prophetic. It helps you to go on forward from thence. And thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor. And there shall meet thee three men going up 
to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids and another carrying three loaves of bread and another carrying a bottle of wine. Verse 4. It says, And they shall salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. 5. And after that you shall come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets, coming down from the high place with the psaltery and tablet and pipe and harp before them, and they, sh and they shall prophesy. Verse 6 now. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man the last verse it says and let it be when these signs are come unto you that you shall do as occasion serves you because they have become proof that god is with you the prophetic ministry is very very powerful because of its unique ability to access the eyes and the ears of the spirit and to reach into the past and to re reach into the future transport spiritual realities and bring it to you now there are two dimensions of the prophetic as you may have learned foretelling that has to do with declaring things before they happen and forth telling declaring things to make them happen one is revelatory another is creative you need to know this are we together two dimensions two levels of the prophetic there is the prophetic that declares happenings events before they happen it is revelatory there is the prophetic that declares things to make them happen it is creative both are dimensions of the prophetic but now i'm particularly talking about the revelatory dimension of the prophetic another example of this we find maybe for time's sake we may not really be able to read everything is the story of a man prophet called elisha king ben haddad and then one of his boys called hazael you find that in second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 second kings chapter 8 from verse 7 elisha came to damascus and ben haddad the king of syria was sick the Bible says it was told him saying the man of God is here verse 8 and the king said unto Hazael Hazael was like an aid to him take due present in the hand and go and give the man of God and inquire of the Lord he said inquire of the Lord but through the prophetic shall I recover from this disease are you seeing why kings in ancient times were great because they didn't take chances they took advantage of the prophetic so Hazael went to meet Elisha now and gave him a present. Even every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, can you imagine? Just to inquire of a prophet. And he said, thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, had sent me to you saying, shall I recover from this disease? This is where I want you to lend me your attention now. Pay attention. See the power of the prophetic. And Elisha said unto him, go and say to him, thou mayest certainly recover. But Hazael, let me tell you the truth. I have seen it. He shall die. He's saying, listen, I don't want to break his heart. Just tell him he shall recover. But I will tell you the truth. I have seen it as a prophet. He shall die. Now, 11 is where my story begins elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed and he started crying after telling hazael that elisha now starts to cry and hazael verse 12 looks at him and he says my lord why are you crying and he said because i have seen the evil that you hazael will bring you are going to set their strongholds on fire there are young men you will slay with a sword. You will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child. Can you imagine? The prophet was saying, I'm weeping because you, Hazael, as innocent as you look as a messenger now, I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king. I am warning you now. Hear what he said. Hazael, verse 13. Hazael said, but what is your servant a dog? that he shall do this great thing. 
you see the prophetic has reached into the future and he's saying young man you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain your loyalty is not genuine it's just because you are in a condition you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace i have seen that there is evil in your heart instead of the man to say pray for me i don't know my tendencies in the future he said the lord has showed me that thou shalt be king over syria when you read that story the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king, he was cruel and he was wicked. Everything Elisha said that he said he would not do, he did. The prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say, don't throw him completely. There is a prophet in him. The prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say this boy needs counseling say no 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 he's my finest of sons he said you don't know what this gentleman can become the prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the carriers do not even know is resident within their heart there is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture and with the lips of prophets some ignored some received Now, the prophetic sadly, just like the apostolic also, has had its abuses and imbalances because you see, the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly, everyone wants a sense of security and certainty. It's a psychological need. So if I prophesy to you right now, and I'm, I'm not just declaring, I call your name and I tell you tomorrow, one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody you see you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow the next time i say don't travel you will not travel because the memories of the results from the last prophecy this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of christ especially the prophetic community into slaves these are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect the prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces and if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear god sincerely you can turn god's people into animals there are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic there are children there are people who have gone out of the will of god because they came to honor the prophetic so as much as i talk about the prophetic it should never be ignored but i can tell you there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic before i receive from you as a prophetic as a prophetic person there are many things i need to look at number one i need to look at the strength of your consecration number two i need to look at your prayer life number three i need to see the supremacy of the word of god at work in your life if i do not find these things i do not trust your speaking what you say does not have to be inaccurate the margin of error is wide too wide to be received it is not the correctness of what you say that makes you an accurate prophet and it is not the falsehood of what you say that makes you a fake prophet are we together many of us right now sadly have been victims of the prophetic the prophetic is powerful but there are many people who left jobs they should not have left you ask them why did you leave the job he said, a prophet came and told me, you have the call of God, get out of that. Someone will come and say, your wife is a witch, for instance. I'm not being sarcastic. You know I love the body of Christ. And I love the prophetic community too. Imagine as a husband, you go somewhere and someone secretly calls you. And because there's some kind of witchcraft manipulation, maybe in your wife's family, and that person is not sound with the word to be able to discern what he has seen properly. He now says, Oga, you have been staying with a witch in your house. I wish you good luck. Imagine you are such a man, ladies and gentlemen, and you get home and your wife is happy, makes her hair ready to receive you and gives you a big hug and say, honey, I prepared a special meal for you. Uh-huh. Special 
meal. Everything you hear, you will relate it from the lens of that prophetic. What makes the meal special? What have I not eaten in these 10 years of marriage? You want to kill me? Let me just say it. And you see, fight starts there. There are people who in one day, their entire theology can come to naught because of the presence of the prophetic. We must embrace the prophetic. Some of you here may have been disappointed by the prophetic ministry, but let me tell you the truth. Do not make the mistake that many are making to throw away the prophetic and say it is unnecessary. The prophetic till Jesus comes will play an active role in destiny actualization. However, I must tell you, the prophetic must submit to the supremacy of the word of God because the prophetic, if not managed, especially by individuals who do not have consecration and character, it is going to turn men into beasts. It will cause more havoc than it will cause redemption. Are we together? In Acts chapter 11, we're about to pray. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. The Bible talks about a very powerful prophet called Agabus. It says, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem. Came what? Prophets. So in the New Testament, there were prophets, not just one. Came prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch, verse 28. And there stood up one of them called Agabus and signified by the spirit that there will be great famine across the world. Are you seeing the prophetic now? The Bible says, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, 29. We're reading to 30. Then the disciples, every man, according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren, which dwelt in Judea, verse 30 now, which they also did and sent to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. That means in a meeting like this, prophets came to Antioch and one of them called Agabus got up and said, listen, God has shown me something that there is coming a famine how many prophets across the globe cried and began to warn that there will be recession, there will be wars. First, the prophecy of scripture that when the end time is about to come, nations will rise against nation. Is that true? That kingdoms will rise against kingdom. It is not new. It is in your Bible. But the Bible says in Matthew 24 that this is only the beginning of the birth pangs. I have said it again. No matter what kind of fight happens in the world, it is not war that will bring Jesus back. There is only one sign that brings Jesus back. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and then the, earth, the end will come. Everything happening today on earth has happened before. The thing that was is the thing that is. And the thing that is, is the thing that is to come. There is nothing new under the sun. Is it famine? Women ate their children. It's not even gotten that bad. Is it third world nations becoming first world nations? Is it advanced nations retrogressing? Is it leaders being corrupt? Is it corrupt leaders repenting? Is it national redemption? Everything we are seeing is already captured in the prophetic dimension of scripture. But additionally, there have been men and women that God has raised across the globe who have heralded some with uncanny precision the unfolding of events. Many have been ignored. Historically, men and women have always made it a duty to persecute their saviors. There are many men and women of God who have warned. Many have warned. In business, in ministry, here Agabus warned and said so and so would happen. Let's see one more prophecy of Agabus. Acts 21 from verse 10 and 11. Agabus had the courage to even warn Paul, mighty Paul. It says, as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea again a certain prophet named Agabus. 11. The Bible says, and when he was come to us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that 
owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. What he said was the truth. But Paul said, listen, I will go through that risk on account of the gospel. I am surrounded by a very prophetic community. You can imagine when you are connected to people across the globe, there will be a deluge of prophetic words day and night streaming from everywhere. And it is my duty under God to use the lens of scripture and decipher that which is for my reception and that which I will ignore. But it will be the biggest foolishness of anyone even in this end time to throw the baby and the bathwater and say, I do not need any prophetic word. In the midst of all the false prophecies, make sure you don't throw the true one that comes as a bailout system. Hallelujah. God has used me to bring prophetic direction to people and to ministries, to leaders and to kings. I have been directed by myself, myself, by the privilege of the prophetic. I have seen all shades, I have seen all dimensions of the prophetic, believe me. Maybe not all, but I mean I've seen, I've seen, I, I mean that I've seen a vast dimension of the prophetic. I've had the honor of sitting with people, I just returned from Ghana, and you know, I, I think the Archbishop is probably one of the spiritual leaders on earth that I know that has raised about the highest diversity of the prophetic community I know. You see, that is the truth. And so when I have the opportunity to sit with them like this, usually I would discuss what about the prophetic do I need to learn? And I, I could not imagine through my times, you know, and the relationship with him, the, the level of spiritual orientation I have received alone about the operation of the prophetic. Many people who teach about the prophetic are not prophets. Just because you prophesy does not mean you are a prophet. There is the prophetic office given to a man. Hallelujah. We need to pray for all the prophetic and then by extension the apostolic community in this nation and on earth because the prophetic and the apostolic community is much needed. But these are the two groups of people that have received the greatest attack by the devil. The greatest character flaw has come from these two offices. Greatest mismanagement in ministry has come from these two offices. Everyone who is truly called into the apostolic and the prophetic demands and desires your prayer, including the person speaking to you. You have no idea of the attack that is schemed at the prophetic and the apostolic because of the sensitive nature of the assignment. Hallelujah. We need the prophetic. God has called you to be a prophet here. Your first assignment is to be careful. Don't go around harassing people with your limited knowledge. There are people who come to church and when everybody is seated, they start moving from row to row. You are Sarah. No, 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 I'm Grace. Say, well, one day you'll be called Sarah. That's what I mean. You are a liar. You are lying there. Instead of you to repent and go back and retrain yourself, it doesn't mean you are false. What kinds of gimmicks and games? If you are not hearing, you are not hearing. You can grow. Are we together? Or those who go to families and harass people, you just knock the door, peace be unto this house. And you say, well, I've been instructed to come and pray with you and have a vigil. You have all kinds of problems and you start harassing people. One of the biggest mistakes of the prophetic is mammon. Mammon, mammon. You mix the prophetic and money, you are going to destroy yourself. Maybe God is speaking to someone here. There is wealth with the prophetic, but not by manipulation. The moment you start asking people, bring money, bring this, bring that, bring money so that I will see for you, so that I will hear for you, it's just by the mercy of God. Now, please don't go around condemning people. Remember, both good and bad, we are all growing. God is helping us. So this is not for you to carry tonight's message as a weapon and go and say, as you are talking now, I already know the person I will call. And you go and call somebody and say, listen, now you have been deceiving me. Bring all my money, all the money, 11 million in all. Return one by one. That's not what I'm teaching you. 
but you must be very careful the prophetic we must restore the accuracy of priesthood and the sanctity of priesthood are we together there is nothing wrong in blessing a man of God sowing into a man of God's life there is nothing wrong with a man of God challenging you to give provided it's within the boundary of integrity the moment you start playing games and you start scheming and now start adding a lot of prophetic manipulations and then one of the the corruptions of the prophetic is employing extra biblical practices alongside the prophetic even if authentic this is one of the things that has downplayed the purity of the prophetic again like I said when I teach I teach from a standpoint of love it is only God that knows what he has told people it's not my assignment to condemn but it's my assignment to bring God's people to order using the reference of doctrine are we together now yes there is no amount of prophecy you will receive that has not had its parallel in scripture nations were prophesied to by a man and in 24 hours things change so by the time people start sending you to do all kinds of things you know i don't want to start mentioning you know the things that i'm talking about there has to be a lot of care and caution now there are prophetic signs there are prophetic tokens yes it is very possible Jesus washed, put mud in the eyes of someone and said, go to Siloam and wash. An angel came and stirred the water in Bethesda. I understand these things. But there is a way that you operate that it is outside of the jurisdiction of Scripture. You are going to lead people into perdition. Hallelujah. But as far as the leadings of God is concerned, I'm praying even this night that God will raise a caliber, a new generation of prophets in Nigeria and Africa that will be a correction of the mistakes past in the name of Jesus Christ. Most of the apostolic and the prophetic community, I say again, the challenge is usually lack of character, mammon, pride. In many parts of Africa, the crop of prophets that is just a, a, a product is, is almost a mess. It's not even something to talk about, sincerely. And many are gifted genuinely in terms of the gifting, my goodness. But as beautiful as the gift is, it comes with such an ugly life and a, dispos a disposition that it cancels out the beauty and the purity. The prophetic, the gift will attract people to you. It is your character and stability based on scripture that now glorifies Jesus. Are we together? By the time I prophesy to you and you say, oh, man of God, that's true. You have a company like this. I say, yes, you earned 150 million this month. Yes, sir. How did you know? I say, now, now that I've seen that amount, you will be mistaken to think that prophecy, that prophecy will finish with just telling you that amount. Go and carry 30 million if you don't want to die. Rush with it and stand in front of my office tomorrow. You just bought a Jeep. Yes, sir. How many? Three. Carry two. First to my house. You have 10 houses. Yes. What are you doing with 10 houses? Oh, God just said I should build. Did he tell you one is from you? No, all those kinds of things. I'm not being sarcastic, but we need to repent. When I say we, I add myself in it. Whether you are innocent or not, when you are addressing the body of Christ, you must include yourself in it too. You don't stand from a standpoint of self-righteousness and say we, and say them. Mm -mm. I don't do tell them. If one fails, all of us failed. If one succeeds, all of us succeeded. Are we together? But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is my prayer that through you or around you that God will send authentic prophetic voices haven't told you some of these negative parts of the prophetic I submit to you by God the day you are privileged to have access to the accurate and accurate prophetic office balance with scripture with character accuracy in hearing you will a, your lifetime can be downloaded in a moment and you will get up with you will start running like the foxes of Samson 
you will now know that the reason why you have been marking time is because of lack of hearing there are people who have who have achieved so much in destiny in one year than many have done within two decades because the prophetic God used the prophetic to give them wisdom as much as I prophesy to people I am a very principal beneficiary of the prophetic you see my coming to Abuja in addition to what God told me God used a lot of prophets and some of them with precision I cannot begin to tell you with accuracy and precision almost every new season of my life that is about to unfold there has to be one prophet across the globe somewhere maybe connected by relationship or even total strangers that God reveals to them and some of them come with the sincerity of heart and bring that word and it just opens up doors the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord koinonia please hear me this end time demands sensitivity in understanding the leadings of the spirit if you really want to actualize destiny for some of us after this service you need to use this week to at least have a one-day retreat and say Lord the way business is not working for me speak to me what am I not doing well what am I not getting well or are you even in this in the first place When you call on him, he will answer. If God has helped you here to be a man of God or to be a prophet, please, I beseech you by the message of God. If you don't have an answer to people's problems, be secured enough to give them intelligence from scripture. But don't be under pressure to tell lies. There are many times people come to meet me and say, Apostle, I know. And you know, those are the kinds of statements that now massage your ego and you are now tempted to lie. Apostle, I, I traveled all the way from America. I'm here right now. And I knew the moment I see you, one word. Aha. Uh -huh. And you now say, okay. Um, now that you have, you have encouraged me like that, how in the world do I tell you I will go and think about it? And that is why even genuine people, I hope you know lying is not falsehood. It's just sin. Many accurate prophets have lied. The same way many false prophets have told the truth. Hallelujah. We don't lie because we are false. We lie because we are human. He said God is not a man that he should lie. When they met Balaam, remember that? Let's not go there. Let me just talk about something else. Let me encourage maybe servants of God who are following or those who are here. Please do not be under any pressure to tell lies. If it is something you need to pray about, you can tell the people, please give me some time and let me pray. You may need to consult like doctors do. You see, a doctor will say, okay, allow me. This is new. In my 35 years of practice, I've not seen it like this. Let me call another colleague in India or another colleague somewhere and just send the samples and let's look at it and compare notes. But it's only men of God who are proud. We are know it all. We sit down and die and tell lies rather than just opening your heart to say, listen, I, I may not have clarity about this issue, but let another person speak. Hallelujah. People have lied about election. People have lied about, about uh, the economics. People have lied about so many things. We need to be very careful and not get under pressure. But let me encourage you, do not be a slave to the prophetic. Open up your heart to receive the prophetic within the jurisdiction of his relevance. But hear me, this is what will keep you to the end. The voice of a prophet no matter how accurate i hope you know there are many things god said in the bible that did not come to pass 
it does not make, make God a fake prophet. Many, many things he said would come to pass. For instance, it is his desire that all men get saved. Are all men saved? There are people going to hell every day. Is that true? The Lord is my shepherd. We have come thus far by the leadings of the Spirit. I cannot begin to give you instances of the leadings of the Spirit. It's December now, and one of the things I hope to teach you before this year wraps up is the power of retreats. Most of us do not know how to hear a word from the Lord and then to run with it. It is risky to just celebrate Christmas alone. Beautiful Christmas tree, by the way. Let's appreciate our lovely people and the flowers here. Hallelujah. But if all you are thinking about is just celebrating Christmas, eating chicken, cow, and running around, going to visit friends, family, that is wonderful. But there must be something within your heart to say, Lord, I need your leadership. Guide me. I am tired of making mistakes in my life. For someone, God is speaking to you. People will not continue to forgive your mistakes forever. There are mistakes you are going to make that may cost you your relevance for the rest of your life. And God himself is calling on you right now. And he's telling you, it is time. There are levels in life. These people are keeping the Christmas tree instead of them to focus on what we are discussing. We just commented the, the tree. It doesn't mean that... Um, are we together? You flog it out with destiny. Lord, I need your leadings. I made certain mistakes before I got married, you may say. But now I have five children. I cannot afford that mistake again. Because while I suffered alone, now there are five people there. I made certain mistakes. We were ten in ministry. But right now is a ministry with branches all over the world. I cannot afford that mistake again. Listen to me. Stagnation, mistakes, unnecessary errors can be eroded in your life if you understand the leadings of the Spirit. The meek will he guide in judgment. There are fathers here who need to just go and sit with your family and say, let's pray. Even though I'm the head of this home, I confess I do not have all the answers. We need to go to the one who is the fountain of wisdom and to hear him speak to us. There are leaders who need to retreat and say, listen, even though we are great leaders, we do not have all the answers. We need to go back and trust God to speak to us. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. We'll seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. Step by step, for step by step, you lead.
Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.